Well, he can't be he can't be walking around in our village. He needs to be secreted away. No, he's not going to like that. Well, it, he doesn't have a choice. Yeah, he does. He's he, not. He's just going to just not do it. He needs to look. He needs to look like he's dead. He can't be out walking around. So you're keeping him under lock and key in the manor house. Well, not under lock and key, but he can't leave. Okay. Can't you just like give him a disguise? Yeah, I, like, I guess I can he's, do a, that. he's a he's he's a wizard. I think he's he a wizard. Find his own disguise. Yeah, like he can at least pass. You know, basic in person. Here is what Zach Wheel tells you. He's unlocked with this book. The individual spells within the book are beyond his ability to ca- to cast. However, yeah. the book itself is imbued with powerful magics this is kind he calls it kind of a side effect of transcribing spells of this magnitude into the same place and bound together under the same covers imbue the book in a way that he thinks he can unleash an extraordinarily powerful magic from it this is going to be extremely dangerous and exceptionally chaotic, both things which seem to please him, and he can only do it, or he can only make the attempt once. Mechanically, Zach Wheel has the ability to cast the spell Wish. Ooh. This will consume the book. There will be magical backlash that Zach Wheel himself will have to contend with. And this will reduce his further spellcasting abilities going forward. Okay, so we're going to keep that in our back pocket. But he's willing to do this in order to get Aslan. That's how bad he wants him. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, like, Genie will just ask him outright when he's in person. He's like, what? He goes, when this is over, he goes, are, he goes, are you coming with us? Like, is that his intention? Is he, is he intending to stay in Darkon or flee to another realm? Or he would he prefer to- not to. <laughs> <laughs> like not stay in dark or not not come with we'd prefer not to no he would prefer us. not to stay in dark on okay this yeah is... no like if he it, i'm i just want to make sure that like is his intention to come with us if you because if so if genie take will yeah if he wants to come with us genie will i like, mean he, he hears that your world is kind of a shithole at the moment there's like religious there's war going people. on and mm-hmm. We're yeah, we want to it's this still spot. probably better than this one it's only a city that got destroyed. There's still the whole other world. There so here's the here's cities. the mechanics. Uh, sorry, I have his. I don't have a stat block per se for Zach Wheel, but I have some notes here. <sighs> Just want to see what how high of a level of a wizard he is. Twenty-five. I'm assuming he's more, like. Not quite on par with us. Zekwiel is the equivalent at this point of a 13th level wizard, which gives him considerable spell casting ability. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's actually pretty strong. Well, he was—he would have been strong enough to give you guys a fight as a party. Uh, indiv- I think individually he's as powerful as maybe one or two of you together. You guys are about level 13 or 14 now. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. level 13 wizard is high enough level to cast level 7 arcane magic. Which is pretty good, but not good enough to actually let him cast the spells that are in the book. Those were all, I think, level 8 or 9. He, he's on nine. par with Ekon, but he doesn't have the extra level of Noble. You can either use Zach Wheel as a resource to cast this, cast wizard spells to your benefit when you go to take on Azalin, Or you can trade it all in for what's behind the curtain and take your shot at wording the perfect wish spell. Those are your two options where Zach Wheel is concerned. He's either a strong magic using ally or he's a one time get rich quick. I don't think yes. we're ready to flip that coin yet. That's fine. I'm I'm just gonna say don't try and use wish with brick. <laughs> that sounds like you were speaking from experience, sir. <laughs> no, I don't feel like that one's ever come up. <laughs> it, I remember I gave no wish I gave Nodal a wish once and he immediately had a heart attack. No, Nodal had a no. Nodal got a wish, and then he was like, "Oh, uh, I I want a bucket, a mopping bucket, or something like that." Because I am all about like 
like you forget me and that I'm like F me up fam, right? <laughs> I've got you down for F me up fam, yes. Yeah, so no, I'm absolutely the kind of player who would purposefully screw up a wish just to see something cool happen. But as a resource, oh. you don't have to make the decision of what to do with Zach Wheel right now. Just know that you have him available. What about? We also have that favor from uh, Osmodeus. Yeah. Well, I don't, we we don't know it was Osmodeus. It was uh, as well, it was, his, it was it was uh, it was, w- what, it, was what? it was Lucius's old patron, which was Mephistopheles. I'm glad you guys aren't paying attention tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, what I'm saying is, like, I don't think we ever got a name. All we know, and we don't know for sure that it was Lucius's old patron, because we just know that it's somebody that wants to kill Lucius. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, there's a we have a favor from a demon. Right. So, Devil. uh, yeah. Devil. Well, we have a f- a favor from a patron. Mm-hmm. Hell, it could be t- 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 Lucius. It's it's. A, there's a non-zero chance at some point Lucius pissed off to Tanya. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Fuck it, like like just walking around, and, and it would probably be have been Connor's fault. Uh, so okay, let's go through this again. We're going to. Uh, 14... See, here's the thing, though. As I was thinking about that, I was remaining quiet because I was wanting you guys to, you know, get all of your all of your stuff, and then Edmont was going to call upon this aid without the rest of the family's input. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. Is, is it is it is it worth discussing what that input might be before Edmont makes his decision, or are you ready to pull the trigger on that now? Uh, the thing is, I'm not sure exactly what Tatala, who is the NPC in question. She's like, a, she was a warlock, and that's about as far as I know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, McDowell, like some of the stuff you might miss, we we discussed, like the the early discussion that you had to probably get up and miss was that we were going to, our working plan is to, uh, build a mirror, another one of those. I got mirrors. that. I got that. Okay. Yeah. Cause as much chaos as we possibly can. Got that. And then engineer a. Uh, Trap, you know, basically. A, basically engineer a trap to draw, like, where to, to separate Aslan from he, the fact that he can throw infinite dead bodies at us. <laughs> <laughs> at least. That's the least of what he can do. Right. But that's yeah, like has, an insur- has, way more than that. That's an insurmountable obstacle, like, mm-hmm. if we face that head on. Like, that's yeah. not. Uh, so like we like we have multiple layers of like things we have to get through here, and that was just one of them. Like causing chaos is one of them. But for my notes, should I count on Edmond Edmont calling in that favor on his own without input? Uh, was it promised to the family, or was it promised to Edmont specifically? He's the one who has the nail. Yeah. So yeah, that's up to you, dude. Like if you want to. Uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll go without input from the family again you don't have to pull this trigger you don't make the decision on what you want to do right now i just want in my notes Mm -hmm. i'm going to put that's what you're going to do with it okay so we're not going to discuss Uh, the nail then uh so real quick because i'm going to make notes again uh that's 1400 gold pieces to uh what's his name hire van richten to to locate this bound celestial angel uh that's we also have uh darkwood What's, okay, so I need, yeah. I need to say something about Darkwood. Is if you bring him in on this, you realize that what the real plan is is he's using us as a distraction so that he can use the machine, right? He doesn't seem interested in the machine. Like it's the only that... thing he brings up. No, it isn't. Like, literally, like, like, <laughs> it isn't. Uh, the last I... time you talked to him, it was the first thing he asked about. Right. Well, we told him about it. Like, he can use the machine if he wants. I... Like, he didn't seem interested in using it. Like, am, am I... Am, am I... Uh, did anybody else get... I mean... Sorry, Darkwood? Yeah, like, what was... He, what he, didn't was everyone's... Seem, he didn't really seem interested in using it. He seemed like he was genuinely interested in uh, helping us, at least in the short term. Like the, he gave the whole speech about like Burks getting out of a cage. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to have a talk with him, but I just I'm I'm putting that out there. You bring him in on this. That's what I think is going to happen. Like, 
listen to me. Like we are literally like we're fighting the magical equivalent of a nuclear device. We need the magical equivalent of a nuclear device. Darkwood is that. Ekon's been very quiet for this discussion. Oh, in terms of in term I mean Ekon has laid out all his points at the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Um, like I don't know that I have much to add about the discussions about say Darkwood or uh all right. Ezekiel. That's fine. Uh, so we have, uh, uh, Ekon is doing the, uh, the Phoenix. I guess we might need a way to bring, uh, in addition to finding him, we need a way to actually get Veladross across the mists. If he agrees to come help us, yeah. Ideally, without him coming through and you know, ping, you know, giving Aslan a text saying, "I am coming to kill you," and I, or I'm maybe, going to come help the House Veritas kill you. I mean, maybe with like that be part of the chaos you want to sow. Who, like, who? Should, should chaos be in full swing when that when that text comes across? Is that the angel's name? Yes. Okay. Yeah, right. I mean, that that that's an idea. Like we we pull that trigger right then and there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we set the Firebird, we send um, the Angel, and then whatever else we unleash, the Vistani can start some chaos. And then, the, in the middle of this, Aslan realizes well, that Roa Darkwood is about to use the Rift Spanner. So, like, again, we we, do, we still need to talk with Darkwood. Uh-huh. And uh, Darkwood seems like the... I don't know. Like, like I get what you're saying. Like, he see, he's... He can He strikes me as a guy who can be untrustworthy, but he can also. He can also. I don't know. Just from an outside character perspective, I would be furious if this campaign ends with us being the guys who are there while Rowan Darkwood beats Aslan Rex. I would find that extraordinarily unsatisfying. I don't think Darkwood is going to fight Aslan for us. But uh... you see, you and McDole. Other than... <laughs> oh, I don't even want to talk about what he's going to say. Uh, but yeah. I was going to ask if we put him back in the thing yet. Yeah. Did you guys put him back in the gym? No, we helped him escape. <laughs> he's going to have to fight back to get back into the, into the table just like him. You motherfucker. The question Saul has to ask himself is would I run a D&D campaign for 70 sessions and then end it by saying the other guy Rowan Darkwood? Maybe. <laughs> yes, next question. <laughs> Rowan Darkwood? Absolutely. For any other NBC, no. But for this particular NBC? Mm. Give us pause. Okay, Darkwood so is pretty of, good. Yeah, so in terms of, like, how do we actually bait this trap? There's a couple things. One, he fucking hates Strahd Von Zarevich, And I am really good at disguises. If he could be made to believe that Strahd von Zarevich is here, which I know outside of the, you know, in the game world, the mechanics of, of Ravenloft, we know that's not possible, but from his perspective... Victor, here's the thing, though, is we know that, that in, in, in Victor Mordenheim can't come here either, so well, it, it's, it's the reason that Strahd couldn't come here either. It's not outside the realm of possibility that Strahd would, like, work for centuries to figure out a way to come here just to fuck with Aslan. Now, I agree that's not probably the best course of action. It's maybe unbelievable. It would be really hard for someone to pretend to be Strahd to Aslan, of all people. But, I mean, I'm a really high-level rogue with exactly that skill set. Another mm -hmm. thing is we know that he wants... Or we know that he did want the results of the Mordenheim project. It's I would not want to actually give him Genie's original body, though. I mean... I, Genie kind of shrugs about that. The like third it's, it's, thing is... It's not doing the, me any good. Well, the, the third thing is... This is something I've noticed that we may be able to use against him. I don't think this is an established characteristic of the published versions of Aslan. I think this is unique to this version of Aslan. He is extraordinarily vain. Every time we see him, he is like an image of earthly perfection. He's glowing and angelic. The uh, horse shit in the streets retreats from the sight of his boots. When he was in our village, he went in here and he blocked all the windows. 
so that no one could see him. And then someone came upon him, and then Aslan killed him. I don't think that kid was killed just for disturbing Aslan. I think Aslan killed him because that kid saw Aslan in his true form. Because we know he's a lich, and this perfected human shape that we see is obviously not the real him, right? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. obviously a glamour. I think if we could reveal his true face, it would infuriate him, and he would just fly off the handle. And as it happens, we have a few magical... We have... This is going back up a jillion sessions, but Ekon, you have some salts that were specifically for that. When we fought the guy in the riverboat, we have yeah. salts that can break magical illusions. Yep. So that is potentially a card we have to play. That's a bit like Willow Ufka using his disappearing pig trick at the very end of the movie. <laughs> it, would be a good, it would be a good thing, like, we're about to spring the trap and we need him to not be in his right mind. He needs to just be a ball of fury. Oh, Which also uh, means that you're about to die, so you better have your ducks in a row. We could also uh, attempt to bring Platten back to a... Platten, yeah, Platten was I would was love to have him in on this. We need to we need to extract Pladen from the situation because we definitely want to yeah, we need to we need to call everybody. Yeah, back. we we also need him once we get back home. Right. Oh, uh, that, that reminds me. A job I wanted to give Tenny was I wanted her to use her druidic skills to search for that magic moss that might cure uh, Donique. Because even if it doesn't work, which Van Richten suspected wouldn't, I think it's a good training exercise for Tenny to do something like that. Uh, the thing it, uh, I actually have a better solution. Okay. Or uh, if you got like, maybe not better, but a different like thing for Tinny to do. Okay, what's that? Uh, the ravens. I know she, she hasn't talked to me about the ravens. Uh, yeah, like uh, I've asked her a couple times and she refuses to talk to me about it. She, yeah, she refuses to talk to you. Ooh, burn sauce. Mm. Okay. And he's, yeah. you're, like she said, like Jeannie makes like a hand motion. You don't like. I don't think you seem to grasp. Like you don't seem to grasp that you are Tenny's ruby. <laughs> like uh, you are not her friend. You are her jailer. I have tried. I've it been does way not more... matter. She no, is ruby. thirteen years old. <laughs> you know what? You recall what you were like at thirteen. Oh, I was a piece of shit at 13. I, I <laughs> cut a man's face. Like, Edmont just smiles and gives gives that big wide uh give those gives those wide uh, raised eyebrows like mm-hmm. Victor. Okay, so, okay, so someone else do it. It'd be, that'd be a Victor, or, I think, or Edmont thing. I, I, think I would Edmont. rather it be Edmont than Victor. Victor has a bad track record with the Raven people. What? No. That's actually a good point. You did threaten to kill one of them. I was there. That happened. No, I wasn't there. If we could get the if we could get the Raven people on board, I we don't know what the Raven people's motives are, but also one of them, one of them was good at making magic shit. So I would love to get her in on this. Also, uh, Edmont is also a shapeshifter. I mean, yeah, that's they, they, they had shapeshifting abilities. And what? All shapeshifters know each other. Is that what you're? They may see uh, each other as potential... I don't know. Werewolves are usually evil, right? They may not think highly of werewolves. Like, I, I don't know what the standard... Like, it, it, like, I don't know what the standard alignment is for were-raven. <laughs> that sounds like, like something you could you cash in a piece of lore to learn. I don't have any related to that. Emma might. I would say this could be tangentially related to what you have on Aslan. So the Keltastravi, yeah. Okay, um... Actually, I'm. Do you want to cash in one of your Keltastravi lords? Sure. To do what? Learn the. Learn more about the relationship between the Keltastravi and the Were Ravens. In mechanical terms, yeah. The general alignment of werewolves, such as the Keltastravi, is chaotic evil. Whereas the general alignment of were were ravens that's a hard word to say is typically neutral good i don't think they would give me the time of day though yeah suffice it to say they would not they tend to not like each other much okay 
All right. So how, how about this? Well, I the can't... thing is, is we want we're not we're not. I'm not suggesting that we talk to them. I'm suggesting that we get ten, we we give Tinny the job. Tinny, Tinny, I think Tinny should be the go between. Like okay. like like she wants like she wants the. She's proven herself. Mm -hmm. This is her task. Yeah. Like we we need we need somebody to be act as the go between with the Ravens. I'm okay with that. Like so, like getting Tinny to to work on that. And yeah, but and, I do want her to look at the moss thing too. Okay. I feel like that's a good job for her training. So, what is to be done regarding Duke Darkwood? What like, are you telling him? What are you bringing him in on? What are you hoping he does for you? Uh, we could make a vote, I guess. My vote is all in on Darkwood. All in on Darkwood? All in on Darkwood. That like, is we... the worst possible plan that you could ever propose. Yeah, when, I say, I, when I say all in on Darkwood, I mean, like, don't we don't hide anything from him. He is our... We consider him an ally in this. Well, yeah, okay. I'm not saying we like we put we point. I'm not saying we point him at Aslan Rex and say sick him, tiger. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think if there's what he would. Is there any way he could screw things up if he knew too much? And I don't think so. I'm not sure he cares. Of there is, but we don't know that. I mean, I've already told him everything. Like right. Yeah, like, of course you like have. Twice. <laughs> you guys told him how to use the machine, so that's all he oh, needs. Yeah. It's already over. Well, even if even if the machine actually works, well, one of us is going to use it and strain everybody else. Well, I need no, to step yeah. away for two minutes. I'm going to be right back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is something that I've been adamant about. I think Strahd was bullshitting us about the machine, and I think it's going to have some sort of really serious side oh. effect when it's used. It's probably going to be an efficient amount of radius. And honestly, if that were the case, then better Darkwood than us. Well, I'm concerned it would actually affect all of Darkon. We're gonna leave anywhere. It couldn't happen to a nicer place. <laughs> so you're just gonna fuck over all these people? <laughs> I mean, no, but I mean, eh, eh. Really, yes. I mean, so is your opinion that we need to destroy the machine as part of our objectives to get home? Uh, I need to talk to Darkwood about what is goals are and i need to warn him that using this machine would be an act of extraordinary evil that is the you know apotheosis of strad von Virovich's ten thousand year old plan to defeat aslan rex like i mean I, i've already so just so you know like the last time we had the discussion with him and like he had that he had that great he had that brick had that great stinger quote that mcdole ruined hilariously mm -hmm. uh right right after the phoenix attack like i told him like i sat him down with the schematic of the device explained what it was supposed to do and also impressed upon him the whole this like this is what it, we were told it does but as you can see there's a lot of information missing mm -hmm. so like i laid what we knew on the table but like what we know is very unreliable yeah that's why i why would strad hide that information from us unless there was something he didn't want us to know all right so, so yeah, I am of the opinion that you don't send Rowan Darkwood, of all people, in to face your arch nemesis in order to honk him on the nose. But you I can tell him to win the war. But I can tell you this about Darkwood, like, because Genie is like sat down and had like classes and shit with him. This man knows extra dimensional portals. He knows how to find them. He knows how to identify them. He knows how to use them. That is three things well that's two things that i cannot do i i can I, actually find portals <laughs> yeah, he taught so, me that find portal spell <laughs> so here's the thing and i picked this up when i was reading through the lore document that apparently no one me ever read <laughs> um the uh, Ferniskins, or not Ferniskins, but like their progenitors the the endolines actually used to be really good at making doors they used to have magic doors that would take them everywhere so yeah, that, yeah. Okay. knowing how to do that this angel, who is be from possibly before that era, when we lost that knowledge, he might know how to make those doors. It's a you know what's better than an angel that knows how to make doors? Two people that know how to make doors. 
Uh, one there, there, uh, and then Jeannie hesitates and she looks at Ekon and she says, "There is one additional thing that we might want to like think about, Ekon." What's that? Uh, she goes, "Uh, you've explained to me, like you basically, I'm assuming, have explained the whole. I can't summon celestials here because they'll get trapped. Right? Because this place is like a bubble that traps spirits. Mm -hmm. If we leave, does that mean that uh, the people that we've lost are trapped here?" Like, are we abandoning Denny? And are we abandoning uh, yes. Giannis? Are we leaving them to the fates here? Do we need to make an effort to try and at least recover their spirits if we can? Like, I don't even know how we would begin to do that, but... We, I think we should at least, tr if it's possible, look into it. I mean, I, you're not wrong, but I currently have enough going on trying to figure out how to transport body and soul to consider about how to just bring a soul with us. I think the only person who could bring Giannis back is Darkwood, which possibly we might be able to negotiate that with him. I could do it. You can, you could bring Giannis back to life. Yeah, look at this rod. No, you need that's resurrection. You would, you, you would need. You would need true resurrection, which is a ninth level spell. Oh, it, oh, that's right. He got exploded. I have his signet ring. I don't think that's enough. We do have a wish. I think using a wish for that is very dangerous. So what I'm suggesting, what I'm what I'm giving Brick Road the opportunity to do, right, is to bring the Suikoden thing full circle, and then if we get all the stars of destiny to revive Grimio. Well, first things first, I made this ruling many uh, campaigns ago regarding the wish spell. If you use the wish spell to mimic another level 9 spell or any other lesser magic, which is kind of its primary function, there's very little, if any, chance of it backfiring. If you were to use mm -hmm. it to cast a spell like true resurrection or meteor swarm or something along those lines oh the wish could be used to, to re replicate it right the, I, yeah. I forget the exact wording I had, it's been a while since i actually read this spell you don't I think... yeah i know destal has a destal back when he was playing nap emulated a lot of a lot of off class spells as a wizard yeah it gives a bullet point list of things uh that it's able to do more or less without risk like you can create this much gold or you can do this much healing in one go <clears throat> uh, where's the line on but anyway my ruling previously had been if you use it to mimic exactly the effects of another spell to me that is uh, a signal that you're in good faith trying to make the wish spell do something that's usually outside your wheelhouse and i'm not going to mess with it it's only when you get into the weeds of I'm going to construct what the wish to try to like rewrite reality. Like that's when out, you can, we pull out the 50 page lawyer document. That's when you're like, how can I screw these jabronis over? Right. The longer your document is, the more chances I like loopholes I can find. Okay. So I'm okay with like, we see if we can pull this off without using the wish and then we use the wish to resurrect Giannis. Or maybe but, we get Darkwood to do it. I think we have kind of two tiers of stuff here. Like, we have maybe more long-term goals, like stuff we sh we should try on our way out, like yeah. rescuing, like recovering the soul of Giannis and Denny. Because Denny was a jerk, but he doesn't really deserve to be here. Mm. I I'm not going to go out of my way to resurrect Denny, but if we can save his soul, I would be okay with that. <laughs> Denny is kind of Right now, I'm not sure that the mechanics of bringing people's souls with us is any harder than the mechanics of bringing people's bodies with us. Right. So, like... No, we actually have a plan to get out of here. Again, our... Ekon's on board, because Ekon's read on the situation is the way out of this plane is through Aslan. Right, but, yeah. like, beyond that, like, I don't... I'm not going to start making plans around uh, around ways to deal with like the fallout of the people who have died here until after we've have some knowledge of what we're doing for the people who haven't. Right. That's I would consider that like a secondary objective. So I, like we have we have primary like set up. So yeah. that's like hiring Van Riften, speaking to Darkwood. Uh, we've set up Zach Wheel. 
Like, so Zach Wheel's kind of taken care of. He's just on standby until we pull the trigger. Yeah, are we assuming he's here now? Uh, he's just the war, us? yeah, yeah, the warlock marker. You know, that stuff like that's that's resources we have that we haven't pulled the trigger on, and then we have like we're uh, waiting for Plaiden back here. Yeah. Yes, uh, like. Uh, getting Pladen back and other Forniskins too because we had a few that left like yeah uh, we should like, we should call them back I don't think we should tell them what's going on because we don't want them entering Darkon to tip Aslan off uh, we just we just need to tell we need to get Pladen and say we're trying to figure out a way to get home we, if you want to come with us you need to come back we really need your help with something like yeah it's so Pladen's uh, response when you reach out to him again with this is the same as his response has been for many years. He would, he's looking for a moment to uh, travel and make his way back, but he's currently strapped. He's in the last days of fighting this apocalyptic battle against zombies. He's making his last stand. He's been making this last stand now for years. We might yeah, have we to might, go. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna have to go get him. Like, and I think the I, I don't know if Brickroad has that adventure in him <laughs> before the finale. But uh, I think we're going to have to, like... I'd be up for that. I would go save him. Physically go retrieve He's Pladen. a bro. He's the person I trust the most, honestly. If he had been here with us, I feel like this campaign would have gone very differently for Evie. I mean, you don't bring Gandalf past the first act. Is... <laughs> you, you, well, you do. He comes back in the third act. Yeah, he comes back and helps save the day. It's third act. Let's go get him. I mean, he's been gone for a while. We're probably stronger than he is now. I don't know. He's been fighting zombies nonstop yeah, for, yeah, four years, be, for three gonna, years. <laughs> gonna come back. He's Conan. Buff, buff old man. So let's put Pl Pladen on a shelf for now. Is there anything else? Uh, okay. I would uh, really like to put a pin in Darkwood before we're done with it tonight. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's see if we can come to a, uh, a conclusion on what should be done with, if anything, Duke Darkwood. Duke Darkwood. I think you can help us find the phylactery in minimum. I think we should speak with Darkwood. Yeah. Okay. I kind of like, want to speak to him alone. So here's the reason. I don't think you should speak with him alone no. because yeah. you uh, tend to insult him every time you do, you do that. I, one of the best uses for Darkwood would okay, be. And if, I, if you guys would talk to him, you're going to undermine every point I try to make. And he's going to make deals with you and ignore me. And... So, like, I promise to uh, advocate for any ideas of yours that seem reasonable. Like, Genie's trying to, uh, like, you and Darkwood are so fucking similar. It's, it's. it's... <laughs> yeah, I know. I really hate it. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like, you and Darkwood are. I hate him so much is because I see so much of what I'm going to be in him, and I hate right. it. Right, and so, so like. like so that's that's one of the reasons why Jeannie like Jeannie is cognizant of this and she's like nah I don't want the two of you get alone in a room like basically with like like she sees one of three things happening one you you uh, insult Darkwood so much he never speaks with us again two uh, he kill you try to kill each other or three he proposes to you and tries to make you his new wife he wouldn't marry me he hates me Sounds like three reasonable options. He literally <laughs> said you remind him of his blast, his of his ex-wife. Oh, we don't know what happened to her, but yeah, I don't we, think we, that ended well. The, the fact <laughs> that she is not two. here, not at his side, the fact that he is, she is not here at his side speaks volumes. So you do, well, know, the, the, you do know the meta plot behind that, right? His ex-wife was Allison Nylesia, back yeah. of the Mercy Killers, and he sold her into slavery in the Lower Plains. <laughs> Yeah, this is a great guy you want us to put all our <laughs> eggs in the basket of. He seems 100% trustworthy. I mean, he's... See, the problem is we don't know that. <laughs> well, we I... can do Lash and Lore. We can find out. I am looking <laughs> on what? Yeah, if you cast Lash and Lore for Rowan Darkwood, man, we, we, we'll be here all fucking day. It's just we like... It just, no like we to... look... I just, all it, all it's all the brick road's really gonna do is say you know, your do legend lauren duck would say it's just gonna say see previous campaign <laughs> it's, like, it's like there's just like a link in oh, the sorry, video your legend lore a link to the to the to the city of sigil not sigil so <laughs> information not found so oh. yeah no uh i i think we should do what like like this i think evie this is one of those decisions we we take a group we, we take a vote 
uh, going to speak to Darkwood, seeing what he knows and what ideas he might have. Yay or nay? And then yeah. Jeannie, yay. And yeah, she I'll raises her hand. She says yay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm in agreement. Okay. At a, at a minimum, maybe he can help us find Aslan's Flackery. Yeah. I'm not sure he, that's good. Without, without that, we're not going to be able to do shit to him. Right. So, the, uh, and Jeannie's, when she goes, like, here's the other thing. I don't think Aslan knows Darkwood is here. Yeah, I don't think so either. He would have done something by now. That You don't leave a guy like Rowan Darkwood to just do his own thing. That's bad. So, I think you guys tell Darkwood everything? Yeah. That you And what do you yeah. want him to do? Uh, I'm, to be honest, not sure what Darkwood can do. Like, I, I don't know. I'm not, like... Yeah, we don't cool. know the full scale of his abilities. Like, like what... Like, He's obviously I get, very strong. I, yeah. Axel the Dark, at least. He cast the resurrect, resurrection, right? Yeah. Yeah, Victor doesn't expect him to come charging the castle with us, but at a minimum, Victor wants Darkwood to help us locate and possibly obtain Adeline's Flacker. Is that something that he would be willing to try and do? You're not going to get a Aslan's phylactery without direct confrontation with Aslan. That's just not going to happen. Let Brickrow answer the question. What Please. does Darkwood get out of this? What are you offering him? Escape? Dominion over your land after you escape? Like, both. Like, we don't, we can't give you, the, like, what... Like escape, yeah. If he, if you want to come with us, you can. So he knows about this rift spanner. Jeannie has told him before, yeah. and he knows mm -hmm. that if he uses it, he and he alone can use it without effectively killing himself. We'll leave it uncharged yep. and send him from this plane. Yep. Yep. So I'm actually going to make comments when he says that. Well, this, this, my... this is all things that Jeannie has shared with him. It's all knowledge that he would have when you guys sit down to speak. I, I will have, like, I would have explained to him, like, you know, like, this is information that we have gotten. But the information, like, as far as I can tell, like, I will have shown him the schematic and, like, shown him, like, walked him through. Like, I was, like, talking to, like, Edmont or Victor. Okay. You know, because he doesn't, see, you know, because he's not a, he doesn't seem to like technology all that much. Like, this is, or magical devices. And, like, this is... The, the the schematics do support that, but there's a lot of details missing. Okay, there could so be, here, like. So here's what I tell him. Sure. I say, you are sent here to do this by Aslan Rex's oldest and most powerful enemy. I do not believe that he sent someone like you to play a prank on Aslan Rex. I believe that this act that you are committing to send someone like you into the heart of Aslan's power to use his most powerful device would be his strike to end the war. I believe that you using this device, which, by the way, is powered by human souls, I believe it would have the potential to cause a terrible disaster. I believe that is Strahd von Zarevich's true goal. And that if you're using this device in that way, you would be complicit. And to be complicit in an act of evil like that in this place would have terrible consequences for you. Darkwood's response to that is that last time he sundered the fabric of reality by using impossible magic in a place where gods are unable to tread. The results did not kill him. I think the worst thing is that that could happen to you here. We saw what happened to Kristen. This place almost took him. Well, he doesn't know Kristen. He doesn't know what happened to Kristen. What do you tell him about Kristen? I mean, well, I, I will explain the situation with Kristen. Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Like, the, the realm oh. itself was trying to claim him. I mean, he was attacked by, by Chris, and so... Yeah. So you tell Darkwood that if you use this machine, it's very likely you're not going to be able to use it to escape. You're going to end up as a Dark Lord. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Okay. I mean... As far as I'm concerned, that's an act of unprecedented, unspeakable evil. But hey, if that's what he wants as his reward for helping us, 
Eyes and ears open. I, this is this is sincere on Evie's part. She doesn't want that to happen to him. But if you destroy okay. the machine instead, then nobody gets to use it to leave. It's Correct. an evil device. Well, like the the thing, uh, like genius, the device itself isn't evil. Like putting people in it is evil. But like they're in there already, so. <laughs> Like I don't know. Like remember, Jeannie's not good. She's just she's she's <laughs> neutral at the moment. She's like so moral like, relativism. Yeah, it's like it's like I mean she's like eh, yeah. I mean like like the that egg has already been cracked, right? <laughs> like like <laughs> their souls are in the thing. It might be better for them to like be consumed. I don't know. I'm not the. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, here's the Evie saying this is a machine powered by death and human souls, possibly trying to cause incredible disaster not just to the people who are around you but maybe to everyone in Darkon and it would be the and I believe that this is the goal of the extraordinarily evil man who's put us up to this like I'm sincerely concerned that he would be consumed in that act if he did it Duke Darkwood the only thing that I think we can offer you is like what do you want Darkwood what do you actually want in your award? You ask us to give you options. What is it you want? He considers that for a long moment. He tells you that he's come to respect the uh, men and women of House Veritas. I mean, you've dealt with this Chris and Fool fairly well. You've proven yourself in many adventures. Uh, you've given him... Uh, quite a lot of frustration, but also hospitality over the time. And despite some uh, the, the, the sorts of bumps and finagles you might expect in any business relationship, he feels that you've always done fair by him. What does Darkwood, if anything, from previous conversations know about the Republic? Where you came from? Uh, if he's Edmund asked any, have... Edmund, yeah. yeah. If he's pre asked any probing questions, Edmund would absolutely tell him about Grand Pernisco. So he knows that there's that you all were taken by the mists, fleeing from this religious war. A war. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He tells you that outside of this place, if he could reach beyond the mists, that he has resources and contacts far and way beyond your possible imagining. He has gods that owe him a favor. If you help him escape this place, which he also has come to believe can only be done by going through Azalin Rex, and you help him reclaim his rights on the other side of the mists, he can bend such power to your side of your conflicts. He said that he can solve wars. What you've described, this, this conflict with the Endoline, is no more than a petty skirmish beneath his notice at the height of his power. Return him there and he will win you your war single-handedly. He does 100% not believe him. That's great. And that sounds like an awesome adventure that I would love to join you on, but first we have to get out of here. So, what you want us, if you help us get out of here, you want us to help you get your throne back? Is that what you're asking? That's what he's asking. Whatever is on the other side, he's going to need some assistance for some period of time. Victor will absolutely offer to help him. He wants to come back to Fernisco with us. And set himself up as king of, like, Grand Fernisco? No. He has no interest in Fernisco beyond the knowledge that you all have an interest in it. His interest yeah. lies in other worlds elsewhere. What uh, he's saying is, if you pledge uh, a period of time to help him recoup his lost power on the other side of the mists, whatever they may be for him, he will win you your war in a stroke. He's offering us a deal on the sequel. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. I don't trust. I don't believe him. Victor absolutely said, "Yeah, oh, good." 
like like genie says if it gets my family to the other side of this godforsaken place the people i care about yes uh yeah icon's response is get us out of here and let us get out of here and once we've done that whatever deals we want to make after that are beyond the facts that my only concern right now is leaving okay I don't, I'm not going to worry about winning a war that I can't get back to yet. As for Azalyn's phylactery, are you placing Darkwood on that task? He no. seems like... Why not? He seems like the most capable of doing so. Okay, like, what do you want him to do? You want him to go find it? Find it and possibly retrieve it. He's the... I, like, for, okay, here's my argument for why he's perfect for this. All right, And you could feel free to <laughs> anybody to refute this. One, Aslan doesn't know he's here. He's going to know he's here if he goes for his phylactery. Oh, yeah. Uh, but Aslan doesn't know he's here. Uh, we don't, like, you're the one that wants to go for the phylactery. No, Victor, Victor. Wait, why do we know, do we know that Aslan doesn't know he's here? Like, we he, 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 he doesn't. Uh, he hasn't uh, acknowledged the existence of Dark. Basically, like, Aslan spent his entire yeah. visit, like, throwing anything we thought we had secret in our face if if he were to if he were to know of darkwood's existence here he would have he would have raised our he would have raised our lands to the ground looking for him i kind of agree at there this point. yeah like oh uh, he would have at least tried to he would have made an attempt on darkwood for sure Saul, make an arcana check me yeah you're the one who cast in a whole bunch of lore about azalin okay mm -hmm. uh da, da, da. like like Genie's like reasoning behind this is uh, Can I give a guidance? Yeah. Okay, take a D four and then take a plus five. No, I'm using a reroll. But this isn't a blip roll reroll, this is just my reroll. Okay. That's a natural twenty. Alright. Okay. Plus five plus a D four. Plus nine. <laughs> You can so be pretty really certain nice. of this. Uh, you've learned that Aslan and presumably other Dark Lords learn intuitively when people cross their borders through the mist. Darkwood did that trapped in a gem that was pushed down Evie's bra or whatever at the time. And he was... Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. Cause did we just find a way, A, out of here, or B, through the mist without their knowledge by... Putting someone's soul inside a gem. Azalyn yeah, has he... never mentioned Darkwood to you. He's never approached Darkwood in all the time that he's been here. At... And Aslan has, in fact, deliberately approached every other person at or near your power level that you're aware of. Mm -hmm. If Azalyn knows that Darkwood here, he's playing very, very close to his chest. You gotta remember, like, Darkwood was basically incognizant when he when we got him out of the gym he was almost a vegetable for a little while like he was like i think the description brooker gave was like when victor tried to like touch him his mind when he was still in the gym was static like just nothingness so i like i b would be willing to bet that he doesn't that's it is a bet it is a gamble I'm not arguing that he does know. No one's made that argument. But what I'm saying is, uh, like, he doesn't know he's here. Uh, he is by and far the most powerful of us. The, the thing is, like, Darkwood has not given any of us a reason to distrust him. He just rubs Evie the wrong way. <laughs> and yeah, and we know Evie's instincts in these situations are never wrong. You've been right twice. I've been right about everything. <laughs> no, you haven't. Uh. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, Victor wants Darkwood if he can on his own to try and find out whatever he can from the phylactery. If not, to help Victor find out information about it. Like, so like, are, are we this, tasking this, Darkwood with learning about this phylactery? Whatever can be learned. Yeah, is like, does anybody have a better thing for him to do on our agenda list? I don't know. He's a wizard. I guess he could help with the mirror, maybe. I. Yeah, no. I don't know that making like... things is really his wheelhouse. No, he. I feel he... like we've got enough manpower on the mirror. Right. Like, like we can. We might be able to hire 
Sedgwick. So, a question, Brick Road, is, does, is Sedgwick and Ray, are they native to Darkon and they operate in Darkon? I believe that they're, their residence is in Falkovnia. I would have to double check. But they, they do business in Darkon fairly frequently. At least twice that you know of. Right. Okay, so, like, hiring them to do this is not... I don't think that's feasible. So. Uh, okay. Any Any for Darkwood? So once you put Darkwood to this task, as far as anybody can tell over the weeks that you guys are putting the rest of this together, he just vanishes from the face of the earth. And you hear neither hide nor hair of Darkwood again, at least until next session. Okay. Uh, so everything else has been accomplished on this list. Uh, we are paying... How much are we paying the Vistani to sow discord, do assassinations amongst Azalin's people, and cause general chaos? It's, are we going to decide to do that? Is, like, uh, Victor, that's it, Victor's... It, that's got, Victor. it got mentioned. It's on my list. Yeah, so Victor, I just want to know how much gold Victor's pouring into that. We've got, like, 8,000... Well, we've got 1,400 minus... 8,000 minus 1,400 gold, Victor. I'm going to go on a limb and say that the gold's not going to come with us when we leave. So, uh, offer two grand. Okay, two thousand. Okay, that's a lot of gold. <laughs> and the task here is for the Vistani uh, to cause general destabilization. You want Azalin's as much of his attention as possible directed elsewhere. Yeah, we want compensated anarchy. We want him to think there's almost like a revolution brewing or something. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know what I'm that for. Okay. And that, that would be exactly the kind of thing you could set them to doing. Mm -hmm. they, they could have, there'd be peasant revolts rising up. You'd have rebel knights raising armies. Like, all kinds of stuff happening that Aslan would have to draw his attention to. Uh, does Emmott want to... Do you want to call in your favor from Mephistopheles this week? Or do you want a week to think about it and come back next session? Uh, yeah, I want a week to think on it, but there's another, uh, there's one other thing that I wanted to, one other loose end I wanted to tie up. Yes, sir. And that's, uh, the Keltastravi. Edmont wants to make a serious good faith effort into helping to bridge that gap between the people of our village and the Keltastravi. And the sad truth of it is that that's going to require more time and energy than you will probably have left in Darkon. Either you will escape from this place... At which point it's going to fall however it falls, or you're going to die in the attempts. Okay. Once you've gone onto this course of action, you are um, all all of you, the whole family, uh, are pretty much giving up on the idea of long term benefits for the land you've built here. These people are going to be kind of left to their own devices once you're gone, one way or the other. Yeah, and Evie will try to set them up to to have a plan for that. All right, so here's what I've got on the list to resolve when we come back first thing next week. Uh, you've hired Van Richten to try and locate where Beldross is being bound. You have Zach Wheel prepared to use high-level magic. You have Edmont calling in a favor from Mephistopheles. Ekon is the ability to summon a phoenix to the cause. Vistani destabilization is taking place all throughout Darkon. You have attempts to recall Pladden from the zombie hordes. Uh, you have Tenny, who is negotiating on your behalf with the Were Ravens, And you have Darkwood seeking information about Azalin's phylactery. I want to add one thing that Jeannie is wanting to do. Yep. Uh, she is going to, she's going to... She's going to go through Victor. She's going to get a message... See if I can't get a messenger to go to uh, 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 Mordenheim's realm. And I'm going to send Morden. Victor Mordenheim a letter. Saying oh what? God. Uh, I am like, just going to... Uh, I'm just going to outright ask her, you know, like... Like, what did... Uh, like, what did, like, like, I'm going to make a plea. Like, what did he ask for you, from you? Like, what, like, what, what was the price that I was sold for? And then I'm also going to ask some general questions about, like, the, the constitution of my body. 
like that kind of stuff, like spec stuff, since I got to live with this body now kind of thing. And suffice it to say, <laughs> Genie gets no response to that letter. Okay. It is sent in vain. I mean, if you were Victor Mordenheim, you wouldn't respond to that letter. She loves talking about her science. What are you talking about? Yeah, like I, I, <laughs> I think I, Genie I, would be the only person who actually would understand it or listen to it. Yeah, like I, I feel like I feel like that was a pretty there. I feel like there was a non-zero chance she would just send a, like a very long letter explaining how smart she is. All right, I'm going to post a straw poll link in the chat, and then I'm going to go dark for a second while I add up. Uh, not a lot of experience from combat at this session, but there was some. You guys want to discuss some blips, and I'll be back in just a couple minutes. Who's most creative today? Uh, that is... Uh, I want to give that one to Evie for... Well, no, that could be particles. Uh... I want to give that to uh, Victor for uh i want to give it to both of you for just shuffling everything out of the <laughs> shuffling everything out the hole you, you can give you can give victor badass for blowing up the bag of holes i don't know if that's not badass that would be intangibles at best my friend it, it, it did shuffling everything out. You uh, I I want to give uh, that to that was actually edmont's idea so I, my vote is edmont for for picking up the shovel and starting to shovel things out of the 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 open hole. Okay. You said GD or Evie for uh or, yeah, she for, for, for talking. Goals. Yeah, she talked to uh she sa she basically single-handedly saved uh the uh the NPC's soul, immortal soul. Okay. Uh, who's a badass? I think that's you for saving me. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. That was that's definitely an Edmont thing right there. So I can't help but notice. For going into the crumbling building. On the Discord, Saul has asked uh, the the previous McDowell, who is Darkwood's arch nemesis in the Planescape campaign. Please help me convince these guys to not put 100% of our eggs in Darkwood's basket. They won't listen to me. And his response was a cat sitting on some pancakes. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're just going to have to see how that shakes out. Uh, that, is, in, that is a very McDowell and, uh, response to it. And Victor definitely gets intang intangibles for the extremely unlucky scenario of him yeah. rolling one exact item that would cause the bag of holding to explode. Now, there are a multitude of items that would have done it. I would have. Right, but it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't. Like, every single one of those outcomes was was pretty small. Right, like I had, well, I had series to, of unlikely events. Yeah, a, like only certain magic items on the table did it, and then I gave you a percentage change. You rolled like a ninety-eight. Yeah. So, all right, who wants to make a case for some blips? I can go. Like, Genie, go. Uh, neutral. Try to be better than I was yesterday for like the argument that the act of trying to do the right thing, even in a shit world has merit what's uh, the quote from like morgan freeman in seven <laughs> the world the world know. is a beautiful place and worth fighting for i believe in the second part <laughs> uh my ideal practical solutions to impractical problems uh playing keep away because i had very little hit points left mm -hmm. i was like i was banking on uh Keeping the monster away from me would be more effective. Um, I was banking that I could outlast the combat. So that creature on as kind of like a uh, layer action on count 20, 
Each of the creatures individually had 60 hit points, but on count 20, they would equalize all their hit remaining hit points amongst each other. So like the last three times you did that, it, eight damage would have killed it. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Those last two creatures, actually, you never did get them. They were, they were both at yeah, 52 were... hit points. Uh, and, uh, don't worry about it. It's just a setback for my constant arguments with Evie. I'm like, like telling her that she's just basically, I'm not dismissing her worries about Darkwood, but I think she's overblowing them. Okay. Like, like I, like I recognize that like from Jeannie's perspective, uh, Evie is just mad because they're too similar. But I think from Evie's perspective, she's like, this guy is, I am just like this guy. He's just like me. We better be careful. So, whereas Jeannie has uh, a much higher opinion of her sister than I think G Evie has of herself. Okay. So. How did that work out for her? Uh, fine, like, so far. Yeah, you're not still mad about that time I murdered you? She actually was never mad at you for that. Now, I'm going to ask and... you a question now, Trouble. Yeah. And I want an honest answer. Sure. I'm not going to be mad. Okay. Did you name the week's video the executive poop shoot? No. You asked me not to. Why do you I know I that? asked you not to, but I haven't actually gone on to check. It is uh, called the Relentless Juggernaut. Okay. I did not name it the Executive Poop Shoot. Good. And so I would like a blip for that video. Although, if I trade the blip in, can I go back and name it the Executive Poop Shoot? No. <laughs> also, I think I mentioned I'm awarding everybody one blip for successfully preventing Kristen from becoming a Dark Lord. That yes, scene, by the did. way, was based on the novel Spectre of the Black Rose, which is the second of the lord soth ravenloft novels oh. and it, it kind of details the process of how a dark lord comes to be where soth relives this uh memory of the evil things he committed in the dragonlance setting that got him sent to ravenloft and he made all the same decisions in the exact same way uh which is what ended up landing him in Sithicus. with Crisson, his difficulty is he was if he had gone the opposite direction if he had decided uh to not warn these people what was coming, to not go to the Veritas house, for example, like even though he knew nothing. If he decided to change his course of action selfishly, that would have done it for him. And the mists would have claimed him. You all would have just woke up inside of his tower and he would have been gone. In case anybody got... was wondering, that's where that came from. Right. I guess he would get, like, he would get Soth's domain since, you know, Soth is no longer a dark lord. <laughs> I imagine his domain would just mirror Brennanine and like his torment would be like, no matter how much work he puts into it, like his cult can never gain any sort of traction. Like the church is always oppressive. Like there's all kinds of plays that could go. That's yeah. a different story entirely. <laughs> we wouldn't have yep. ever gotten to know, but you managed to pull him back from the brink. Yep. All right. Who else has some blips for me? I can go. Evie, what do you got? A chaotic good. I will do my duty for what I shall always be true to myself for noticing that Chris was not being true to himself and just sort of understanding that the dark powers had lured them into this position. Ideal, I must become a leader that others can believe in for finally succeeding in diplomacy and talking Chris down from falling into the dark abyss. You had a big hand in that, but every, other people were helpful, too. I was keeping careful track of what arguments were being made in the first few rounds of the discussion. And ba basically nobody was saying, yeah, Chris, I just let it fucking burn. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> so that's good. Well, no one understands for the party still putting, in Evie's opinion, too much faith in Darkwood. A cat sitting on pancakes, man. That's all... That's all you it's get. A, yeah. I think it's the look on the cat's face. <laughs> Who's next? Like he's giving us that look is what he's doing. <laughs> Who's next? Can we give a book to other big doll for cat sitting on bed case? <laughs> I don't think he took the picture. Who's next? 
Uh, I can go. What's Victor have for me? Uh, not using all your people. That would be trying to manipulate the past crowd by having a uh, person go on the same route to find out exactly what happened before the city burned down and if it could have been stopped. Um, for so as to that question, though, uh, I did have where I was... My original use for that warehouse map was there was a side plot in the prologue of the campaign where you could have discovered some remnants of the Endoline forces beforehand. But those uh, storylines just ended up not getting pursued. So we could have changed it and never gone to Ravenloft? No, absolutely not. <laughs> it's just, you would have come by a different road. Alas. You would have had like a big fight against Endoline forces and you would have had to try to convince the church and state that others... Oh, it would have been an uphill battle, a bunch of political nonsense. The campaign. You run out of town on a on a boat rail and then into the mists. Right. Um, so, for ideal, seek the truth no matter the cost. That would be having Darkwood find out information on the Flackery. Okay. And then for alignment, whatever it takes. That was Victor reaching down deep inside to find the words that finally save Christmas. You didn't, though. Thank you, Tolkien. <laughs> Are you he asking me? I mean, I, 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 I acknowledge that you did a Google search. <laughs> for I wonder if he pulled, speech. Down, pulled down his copy of Two Towers. And listen, I appreciated this speech. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to interrupt good old Samwise Gamgee. <laughs> All right, that's fair enough. <laughs> Who's next? I, I did suggest in the chat that uh, uh, that uh, this week's title should be "Where are the, where are the freaking eagles?" Jeez. All right, I guess I can go. Hang on. Uh, I've got lawful good. The shining words of air lay down for a path for us all. For arguing that the fourth sundering will be an act of God rather than man. Okay. I've got, uh, we'll make it out of here somehow for grabbing magic items on the way out in the hopes that some of them might provide information or me mechanics to get us out of here. And I've got my flaw. I'm sure there has to be something good over the next hill for providing the final rights on Prism uh, with the assumption that no soul is truly irredeemable once it ascends to Air 7. All right. And uh, initiative. And the initiative. And that just leaves Edmondo. Slimo Edmondo. What you got, Simon? I've got my uh, alignment, lawful evil, blood red's thicker than water, and my own blood thicker still for choosing to use the dark powers to hold on him to rescue his family. Probably a good choice in that moment. Um, I have my ideals. Life is my canvas, and I will make my arc on it for finally getting to punch that Stupid straw hat man in the face. Yeah. You think that was really him? That was really him. In my heart of hearts, it, it was him. Okay. And my flaw, this world is filled with predators and prey, and I sure as hell am not the prey for for analogizing it, the uh, the mists and Kristen as a as a beast that's playing with its with its prey before it makes the kill. <laughs> Which is basically what was happening. Uh, who had the most creative solution to a problem this session? Uh, that was Edmont for picking up the shovel and starting to shovel <laughs> valuables outside the hole that was blown in the side of the tower. And <sighs> who did the most to assist the party's goals? It was Evie for Kristen. And who was the badass? And also for and also for being the being the one to actually have the, all the all that lore document stuff ready to go. Yeah. That was yeah, the lore document stuff. That was pretty impressive too. Who was our badass? Uh that was Edmont. For kicking yeah. down the door of a collapsing tower to save his duchess. And intangibles? I uh that was uh Victor for the monumental bad luck <laughs> that caused us the bag of holding. <laughs> and all of the adventuring gear inside of it. And Edmont has our poll, too. Oh, wow. Thank you. All right. Did you give us experience for the monsters? Not oh, I thought, sorry. I thought I did. 
Yeah, let me get that for no. you. Not yet. Uh, for three avatars of death, everybody's taking 1,950 experience. That was a uh, just souped up stat block from the avatar of death that shows up sometimes with a deck of many things. Gotta love it. Uh, Edmont, you had zero blips, but you just earned seven. Nice. So you're full back up and you roll one over. Blips are currently yeah. worth. 833. 833 is what a blip is worth. Uh, Ekon, yeah. you had had three. So. You had three and earned five. So you're rolling over two? Uh, no, I had zero. Oh, I had you here as three. Well, then you have five I, now. Yeah, I'd used my last two blips during that counter, I believe. Oh, maybe I didn't. Okay. I might... Yeah, I think you might not. I think you might have missed me spending them to level up. That's fine. Uh, Eevee. You had mm -hmm. you had six and earned five. Genie, you had five and earned five. Okay. So you're yep. rolling over four. And Victor, you had two and earned five. So you're rolling over one. And that brings everybody in next session with six by my count. That's a eight something what? Eight three three. Three three. Okay, I have to do that math. What is the character advancement to fourteen? Now That's 15. it. When we come back next week, we will see about going into the finale of Ravenflump. Yep. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. None. Yeah. Absolutely fine.